general officers are more like a feminist study group than they realize. Hello, I am Chuck the Bureaucrat, and in this essay, I will explain how military leaders are more like a liberal arts college women's and gender studies professor than they realize. <laughs> Look, as some of you may know, I had the good fortune to attend an Army War College Fellowship at MIT. Yeah, 10 of 10 would highly recommend. One of the really cool aspects of the fellowship is that there was latitude to audit the classes of your choice. I mean, you have to attend some core classes, but after that, it's up to you to find the courses that best prepare you for your future assignments. Time, this was 2016, there was a presidential election underway, and the Army was getting ready to start thinking about how to deal with transsexual soldiers. And so I audited a class on the history of gender. It was massively educational. I could go on and on about all the things that I learned, but there was this one particular notion from the feminist movement that really opened my eyes into what the military does on a regular basis. The idea is discourse. It's basically the spoken, or more importantly, the written communication that forms the part of a large debate. Maybe you liberal arts guys knew about this, but throughout my engineering undergrad or MBA or ops research masters or, or PhD in statistics, the idea of a large discourse and debate, <laughs> that never came up. Anyways, in a nutshell, discourse is the way a large group of people debate and explore the options and merits of, of different things that happen within their sphere of experience. You can easily imagine how the, the thinking on women's rights and gender were shaped by pivotal essays, and articles, and papers. What might not be obvious, even to lifelong military people, is the degree to which military thinking is shaped by discourse. Literally, just talking about what it means to be in the profession of arms. Those small group discussions at your professional military education? Discourse. After action reviews? Discourse. Organization offsites? discourse. Even those gripe sessions where you and your buddies solve all the problems of the army in an afternoon? Discourse. And what's more, many activities that are centered around policy decision making, they're also a formalized version of discourse. Comment resolution matrices, monthly readiness reports, updates on end strength and recruiting and retention, they're all influenced by the ongoing dialogue of engaged professionals. Okay, so what? Well, the first thing to keep in mind is this. Policy making or military operations, they are human endeavors and they are resistant to mathematical formula. As soon as things become mathematically predictable, people are gonna take advantage of that predictability. So for those number crunching brothers of mine, always keep in mind that there's more than numbers in this game. Number two, no matter who you are, start paying attention to the discourse that is going on around you. Tune into the fact that an AUSA conference or a graduation speech at West Point or a, a budget brief to Congress, these are all part of a giant discourse that is shaping the organization that you're part of. Next, get in the game. Just say something. Write an article. Contribute a brief to a, a, an association. Write a white paper. One of the most difficult things about discourse within a military organization is that it, it feels like it runs counter to this hierarchical structure that we're part of. And yet, that makes it all the more important that you learn to play by the unwritten rules of this game. If you can learn to do that, it will make you much more valuable. And then finally, there's this. I mean, it's important to have an open and thoughtful dialogue, but it's also important to act. 
I have literally seen leaders who were personally responsible for a policy, who would talk and write and go on and on and on about how that policy shouldn't exist, but they would not change the policy. In fact, they were mystified why their subordinates would continue to follow their official guidance and not their meandering discourse. If something is going to change, it's going to take something more than just talking about it. Now, check out this video on the comment resolution matrix and how you can use it to influence the shaping of policy.